All right, absolutely fantastic. Many thanks once again. Welcome back. This is still why in the morning that is on the hashtag. You can find us on our socials and Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well. On Instagram is y244 underscore channel. We are verified with the blue check mark, but personally, you can check me out at Brian Circle 101. Now, this is our first interview of the day. And uh, it's, 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 a very, it's a very powerful session because uh, it's also marking World Refugee Day. And before we get too far, I'd just like to actually give you a brief description of what you should expect in today's marking of World Refugee Day and maybe what are some of the themes for this year and its significance. So uh, this year's theme for World Refugee Day, I can see my phone is trying to do the thing. Okay, uh, MSM Alpana, I love I'm putting you on blast. But uh, this year's theme is actually inclusion for refugees. How do you actually integrate uh, refugees who are living maybe in Kenya and maybe are also outside country and just overseas, especially when it comes to accepting them in terms of their needs, resources, and how does the government actually come in to uh, help, especially also with non-governmental organizations as well. But today we're taking a different angle. We're going to use the tool, which is the power of radio. How is radio? Video coming in to ensure that it helps uh, the refugees in the country to maybe access information, access uh, help, and also have conversations when it comes to sensitizing people, especially netizens of this country, that we should accept refugees and also ensure that they feel at home, even though they are away from home. <laughs> feel at home away from home. Good one right there. And joining us live in studio with us today is uh, George Olwanda. He's a radio programs manager from RE. FM. He's going to tell us what exactly that means. And definitely, good morning. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Precious all my All right, you're welcome. So uh, tell us a little bit of REF <laughs> before I butcher the name. <laughs> REF uh, simply means, ref, uh, simply means uh, it's REF FM, uh, which means refugee FM. It's, it's, it's a short form of refugee. Uh, so it's uh, REF KK FM okay. 88.4. Um, this is a uh, short form of refugee, Kalobe Kakuma. So Kalobe is the, is the camp where the station is located. It's the only station, radio station located in a camp. Okay. So broadcasting within Kakuma and Kalobe, right. uh, that's where the name comes, Ref KK FM. Uh -huh. Yes. All right. Uh, when was it officially in its inception? Uh, 2020. Uh -huh. That is during the COVID-19 times. Yes, yes. Uh, was, there like, was it like a passion-driven station? Was it like an individual's dream? Um, uh, was it like an initiative from the government? Uh, how did you guys see the need to set up a radio station that will cater for refugees? And now since today is also World Refugee Day. Yes. Uh, it, 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 uh, it was actually um, an initiative by RefFM Netherlands. It's uh -huh. one of the uh, organizations that uh, set up uh, stations in refugee camps. Okay. So what happens, they set up uh, the stations in refugees camp, then uh, they, they run for a few time, uh, I'm a, they run for some time. Okay. After, 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 after the station is stable, they, right. they, they give out to organizations, okay. to organizations actually operating within the same area. Right. Uh, so uh, it was, uh, it was uh, previously owned by AAH, and uh, which, which, which later, um, submitted the uh, station to um, Filmaid Kenya. So currently it's being operated by Filmaid Kenya. Okay. Yes, it's an NGO uh, operating within Kakuma. Right. Yeah. All right, before we talk about, how, still on the NGO note, before we talk about how you and HCR and the rest are coming in to really help refugees, uh, why, uh, why target uh, refugees, especially today? Uh, what, 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 what the station is all about, or what the idea was about, is uh, having uh, the, the refugees included, having the refugees feel like they're human beings. Actually, what we what we say is Saudi, we say muako Saudiya, we say muako Saudiya. That's uh, that, that's our kind of uh, the tagline. The tagline. Okay. We are talking about your story, our voice. So what we are doing is uh, uh, getting the stories of the refugees and uh, uh, actually giving it a voice, making sure that they're heard, making sure that their needs are, uh, are met actually, mm -hmm. ensuring that uh, we are doing what we call inclusion. Just as the theme of the day says, we are trying to make them feel that uh, as much as, or, although they are away from their homes, but the camps are also their homes, Kenya is also their home. So we're actually making them feel comfortable, feel that uh, they're part of Kenya, because we are hoping one day if things go well, 
they will go back to their homes and feel like uh, we were in Kenya and this is what we got from Kenya. Right. Yeah. All right. Which is the most prominent uh, nationality that you guys are dealing with or have encountered a lot at Kakuma? Uh, South uh, Sudanese. Mm -hmm. South Sudanese. 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 Because Sudanese. recently they had skirmishes that That's actually it. had almost half of uh, like other netizens from each country yes. evacuated. Did that affect, uh, did, did it like maybe trigger a huge number of uh, them coming at Kakuma since that? Event yeah, probably happened? did because uh, you find that in the, in the camps around or Kakuma and Kalobe, most of, the, uh, most of the people who are triggering in are refugees. And uh, after the skirmishes, yeah. obviously there was an expectation of more of them coming in. Okay. Yeah, but now that is controlled by the UNHCR. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, I'm also interested to understand, like, what are the dynamics that happen before a person uh, comes, let's, for example, still on South Sudan? Like, uh, is there, like, maybe a uh, lesser an immigration, an immigration process that happens, or it's like, uh, immediately it happened, like, the emergency one, where, like, are you a citizen of another country? Do you feel you're not safe? And all, actually, it was, like, declared they're not safe being yes. in Sudan. So I remember the U.S. came and picked all their citizens. Uh, I, I think it was Larry Mador was watching that feature. It was, uh, it was live on CNN. Yes. He did a feature on it, and uh, he was actually trying to paint for people a picture that, you know, South Sudan, hakukaliki kabisa. But then I'm trying to also understand, like, how did they come to Kenya? And then to Dada, Bama, there's like a process, if you don't mind painting for us a picture the, of what happens. There is, there is a process. Uh, I, uh, what I understand is the government is included. Okay. UNCR is also included. Uh, so there is a process. Uh, you can't just come and um, get into the camp. The, 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 the registration, the manifest. So you have to actually uh, go through a process of uh, identifying your nationality, identifying mm -hmm. obviously the reasons such why you are getting into the camp, and also you have to be accepted to the camp before you get in. So there okay. are, there's a process. There's documentation, and there are all that that will uh, actually. Um, enables you to get into that we just don't get into it that right. way yeah all right there's a there's a recent feature that was done by i think it was nimrod tabu just at last week uh, last week on sunday and saturday uh where the uh, he, he was uh, he was trying to bring out how refugees at uh, dadab are going through food short food food crisis how drought is affecting them and how in fact the number has massively doubled and in fact the government is now maybe unable to even sustain them and now uh organizations like wfp uh, unhcr is coming in to help them have like amicable stay yes. uh, for you at dadab what are you guys doing to ensure that them are having an amicable stay we, not at dadab yeah, but we, kakuma, kakuma. yeah I think I think that's basically um, a role of UNCR and WFP, just to ensure Which that. Which you work together with? Yeah, they, they do. They do. They, uh -huh. do. they do work together. together that it's just to ensure that uh, WFP is playing the part of uh, ensuring that there is uh, food stability in the camp, ensuring okay. that they are getting uh, food and all uh, meals as required, uh -huh. and UNCR uh, comes in to ensure that uh, they are. Um, they are well taken care of. Uh, uh, actually, uh, trying to ensure, to I say, how will I call that? Mm, the affairs are well taken care of. So that is basically um, UNCR and WFP's uh, role. All right. Yeah. And uh, back to today's uh, uh, theme uh, or today's uh, celebration, which is marking World Refugee Day. You had mentioned that you're not celebrating it in Kakuma. The event is officially. Being, which is happening literally today, today but you had mentioned in Kakuma you did it yesterday. yesterday yes. uh, were there maybe reasons why that happened and uh, not today? I, th I think the main reason would be uh, most officials might be traveling to Nairobi for the event. Okay. And uh, being, 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 being a camp, uh, the, the same, same leaders were needed to be around on this day. So that's the reason as to why they had to do it yesterday, so that okay. the leaders be around and just make the refugees feel that this is your day, and these uh, we are celebrating you guys. We are uh, we are concerned about you, and we just make you feel you at home. So that yeah. was the reason as to why it happened. It actually happened in Kalobe village right. too. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, had you told us uh, the the majority of, of, of the nationalities that you deal with, and and how do you guys uh, integrate them with other nationalities? You mentioned of South Su Sudanese, Sudan, Sudanese, yeah, mostly. Congolese, uh, South Sudanese, Congolese, Congolese uh, Ugandans. Uh -huh. Ugandans yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. There, are there's a, there are quite a number of uh, uh, nationalities. Yeah, there are quite a number. Over 20, actually. Over 20? Yes. That's quite yeah. ma a massive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's like all countries. Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, like uh, Kalobe is uh, 
a camp that is hosting over 200,000 200 over 200,000 uh uh, refugees and refugees, nationalities. Yes. Refugees, over okay. 200,000, yes. Okay. So it's a camp with over 200,000 national and uh, refugees here. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now I'm also interested because these are people who come from different country backgrounds. It will live alone culture. Yeah. <laughs> but also we can integrate that. They come from a different uh, nation where they speak a different language. Language, yes. It's like, for example, Kitokapo and the Pari. I hate it's pronounced as Pari. <laughs> <laughs> the way people in Pari yeah, yeah, yeah. speak. You don't know, you don't know French. You have to learn French. You don't know maybe how to speak uh, that kind of English that they speak there. So you have to like officially go to some sort of like language training or something. How do you guys even start a conversation with a person like South Sudanese? I know they speak, you said Juba Arabic? Juba Arabic. Right. Uh, Congolese, Congolese, they speak French or yes. Lingala? If, yeah, French and uh, Lingala. Yes. Uh -huh. um, People Ugandans. from Uganda, they have a very awkward accent. Good yeah. accent, by the way. Good <laughs> accent. <laughs> I, had a, I had a Ugandan teacher. Yeah. How do you integrate these people and start a conversation to get to understand them and even explain to you that this is, I need this kind of help? Yeah, first of all, I will, I will start by saying uh, it's one of the reasons why at Ref FM uh, we have uh, different uh, presenters, radio presenters from different nationalities. It, it really helps us in, uh, in getting our programs in order. Uh, apart from that, uh, we have uh, uh, translators. For oh, instance, you can get in, you can go into you can go to into the field to cover an event, okay. and you find that you're trying to get a story right. from someone who doesn't really understand what you're saying. Right. You are using probably maybe English or you are using Swahili. Yeah. So that calls for uh, a translator who will help you get the story done. So you may be interviewing someone uh, in, in English. This person is not getting it. You are trying Swahili. is uh, not trying it. Uh, is not getting it right. So you will definitely need a translator from the same, um, of the same nationality okay. to get the story done. Yes. So okay. that's how we do it. We use most of the time uh, translators. But... You walk around in the camp and you find that most of these guys are learning English. Yeah. There are schools within the camp, okay. so English is being uh, is, is being taught in this school. So they are like uh, they're, they're, they're kind of good in English and Swahili. Swahili. Yeah, yeah. All right, because that's what we speak. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm also looking at it from a point of like now gender, uh, which is like the majority. Is it females or male? Uh, from the, uh, from uh, the statistics. Male? Majority of the refugees. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> to me, I thought it was mothers, uh, female mothers, from, of course. From the, uh, from, 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 uh, no, from the last it's, it's female. Sorry for that. Mm. It's female for that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the majority are female. All right. Yes. Uh, there's a story recently that was done as well that uh, pointed out on child, uh, child health care, especially for refugees. Like, how do you, how do you guys uh, plug in on that to ensure that uh, kids that have come with... Uh, Maybe they don't have a father. Maybe they come with an auntie or just a relative. Or maybe it's the mother and then the father is not there. How do you guys like integrate their health uh, welfare to ensure that you know they get immunization, they get the right meals, also nutrition? Because it, it was pointed out that you know most camps are now in food crisis and now they're reaching out to even other higher uh, aid organizations to yes. come in. I think I think it might look like one of the challenges that are uh, really facing the camps, but uh, I believe and. Uh, I can strongly uh, say that UNCR is really working hard to ensure that uh, everyone who is coming in uh, is being taken care of in terms of health. They have yeah. programs. They have programs where uh, immunization is done to children in case of uh, diseases like uh, measles. Uh, mm -hmm. Like recently, I think two months, uh, two months or one month ago, they are doing uh, measles uh, treatment or immunization. Yeah. So that is well taken care of by the UNCR. All right. Yes. Uh, what about food? Food is done by WFP. Mm -hmm. WFP is, uh, is in charge of food distribution in the camps here. Yeah. All right. Yes. Uh, back to your radio station. <laughs> I'm also interested because radio is really intense. Yes. It's interesting how you guys, uh, if you don't mind us uh, to take us through the process of how you guys curate programs that uh, specifically target uh, specific nationalities like the Su South Sudanese, Ugandans. Because I can imagine this kind of a radio station and its house style. That can be really hard. Like the editorial style yeah. for radio is really intense. You yeah, know? You know? Also choosing the personality, the presenter. And at some point you mentioned you were one of the presenters initially, but now you're like uh, the radio programs manager. Uh, what, what, what we do first of all, or what we did first of all, is to do 
uh, radio, radio calls for research first before you have to first understand uh, your audience so that uh, you know what kind of programs you are giving this audience. So you first have to understand who am I speaking to? Uh, what does this person want to hear? Uh, what does this person want to listen to in terms of music? So yeah. probably what we did was uh, doing a research of uh, um, what these people in camp would really want to listen to. That's what one of the first things that Shreve FM did. What would okay. these people in the camp, specifically, because when you are doing radio, you're speaking to one person, remember? Right. So, uh, so when you are, when we did the research, we find out what this kind of people, um, what what uh, what are the refugees in the camp want to listen to, right. what kind of programs do they love? For instance, uh, mm, we have a lot of youth. We have a lot of uh, youth in the camp. So, what does this one youth want to listen to? What does he like? What does he prefer doing at what time? Uh, is it in the morning? What kind of music does he want to listen to? What kind of uh, conversation does he want to engage uh, himself into? So that's one of the things we did as Ref FM to find out uh, what our audience want before we started doing the programs. And again, uh, given that um, we have different nationalities in the camp, uh, we have to understand what does uh, Sudanese want to listen to and what time right. does a Sudanese like listening to radio. Yeah, so and what is that type or kind of favorite music genre? Yeah, yes, the kind of music does the Sudanese want to listen the, to. What is their genre, by the way? <laughs> I'd really like to know. Uh, Do they have like a name for their genre? Uh, for which, which, which? South Sudanese. South Sudanese. They, most, most of the guys in the youth, uh, most, of, most of them who listen to radio is uh, uh, youth, so they like kind of hip-hop music. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I'm looking for like their tradition. Like for us, we have Gangeton, Kapuka, the rest of Africa, uh, whatever. Are you able to like remember from their community or their country? I wouldn't, I wouldn't really figure that out. But I can't okay. respond to that in the course of the conversation. The sure. But I know a Congolese definitely Lingala. Lingala, yes. Dombolo, yeah. uh, yes. which was recently included in the Grammys. <laughs> Shout out to Grammys. <laughs> so, so, right. so, so as Refefem, what we did was... Uh, Just uh, trying, doing the research, getting the, the, the actual statistics of uh, what uh, uh, the refugees want to listen to, what they want to hear, what the kind of a conversation. And from there, that's when we uh, decided to now start our programming, understanding... Uh, uh, is will want maybe an easy conversation in the evening. Right. Uh, then uh, trying to understand if this is what a Congolese wants in the evening, then uh, would it, how, how, what, what percentage of other uh, refugees would want to listen to the same kind of program in the evening? So right. if it's anything above 80, then that rules out that this will work for the right. whole audience, yes. Right, and uh, it's still on programming. Yes. Like, uh, what are some of the topical, like, not the nitty gritties of the program, the topical, uh, topical choices that you guys uh, display? Like, exactly, like for our South Sudanese, what exactly are they listening to in that program? Uh, definitely, I'll talk. I'll talk about uh, programs that um, uh, programs that talk about cohesion, programs that talk about uh, reconciliation, because uh, these th th these are uh, people who are just from uh, kind of a, to a war torn country or uh, kind of a, a country that is full of skirmishes. So they want to listen to things that will really make them believe that uh, things that are topics that will give them hope, topics that will really make them feel that there's accepted. a day things will be okay. okay. Uh, topics that will really uh, make them feel accepted, make them feel at home. So right. th those are kind of the uh, topics we give to uh, such kind of nationalities, yes. All right, mm. which I th which I think is uh, is a is a very key is a very key area. Yes. Now, in terms of the let's say in terms of uh, employers, uh, em employees uh, that is the word. Do you guys uh, have like uh, a place where like you vet professionally that this person can has the gift of gab, which is the gift of radio talking, and, like you can vet professionally that this guy can talk here, even though he hasn't gone through broadcast class and understood the ethics and ethos of. Uh, broadcasting but this one we can we, he, he can maybe sustain a conversation this one can you know can be trained like how do you guys identify now talent especially for OAPs on air personality on air person I think, uh, what what we do at Ref FM we we, we, we first uh, we, we've given room for volunteership so uh, we get volunteers from uh, the community who comes in those who feel that they have the talent first of all we we we, we get it the uh, we get the word out there by probably adverts and uh, then um, we vet them we actually take them through a process that will leave us with a number of which we feel they have the talent 
they have the talent in terms of maybe production they can learn in terms of on-air programs. Then from there, uh, we now take them through uh, professional training, uh, which takes uh, some quite good time. We train them through training. And I believe through the training, you'll be able, as, as, a, as a professional journalist, you'll be able to tell this guy is okay. He, you will be able to understand this guy is supposed to be put here. This one is supposed to be put on production, put on air, yes. So that's the, that's the process we use at RefFM to just ensure that we have our presenters uh, uh, inter, in, intact here. Yeah. All right. You had mentioned the station is still a uh, community, but uh, it has a commercial... There's a commercial frequency code, which I noted initially. Uh, do you have like maybe plans of like now fully going commercial, or in the meantime, it's just uh, still community radio? Uh, for now, Ref FM is a community radio station, but uh, uh, in terms of uh, taking it to the next level, I think that I will leave to the management. I wouldn't okay. really want to comment on that, but uh, uh -huh. what we know is uh, currently we are working on expanding the frequency to the rest of uh, Trukana County. Okay. That's one of the things that in the process that uh, that's something already on the table of CAK. Okay. Uh, so it's a process we are we are having at the moment just to expand the frequency to cover the whole of Trukana. Right. Yes. Good. Fantastic. You had mentioned you are an RPM. Initially, uh, maybe what were you doing before you got to this level of an RPM? And also currently, what are some of your roles and responsibilities in the SEMSEM company? Uh, initially, I was working with the uh, uh, CFFM stations. Okay. as a, a breakfast show host, uh, okay. a, news pre a news presenter, and okay. also a programs producer. And uh, how I got to where I am, um, it, was, it, was, it was just through a normal application, job application uh, okay. that I did. Then uh, I saw an advert of uh, uh, radio manager, uh, station manager. So I did the process and, and it went through. So currently, uh -huh. what, 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 what I'm... Uh, a task at Ref FM as a station manager and programs uh, head of programs is to just to ensure the entire smooth running of the station in terms of programming, in terms of uh, HR issues, and in terms of uh, just general uh, staff welfare. Okay. Yes. So how, in total, how many? How many are you? Are the uh, I have a team of ten presenters. Uh -huh. Ten presenters. Uh, ten presenters. That's who are included. presenter producer. Yes, who are presenter producer. Okay. But working on working, uh, training on the job. Or training yeah. on the job. Yes. Paid or volunteer? Paid. All right, <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, uh, as you sum up on that uh, individual part, uh, you can talk about uh, you won an award recently, which was by Kuza. I talk about how you guys won that award and what exactly do you think made you guys deserve that award? Um, first of all, uh, uh, I want to say thanks to the CAK for organizing such an event. Okay. Um, and secondly, how how we got there, it's 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 a Obunifu award. Okay. So that that simply means creativity. Creativity. And okay. I, I believe uh, at Ref FM we are so creative in terms of uh, doing programs, in terms mm -hmm. of um, engaging with our listeners. Mm -hmm. um, from where we are located, remember we are we are the only station located in our Fiji camp, uh -huh. and you can imagine uh, you can imagine how it would be or what it takes. For uh -huh. such environment, uh, for, 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 for a such group, a station to yeah, thrive, yeah, for, for such a group of uh, a team to come mm -hmm. up with programs that really impact the society, really impact the the the, the, the community. So uh, that calls for creativity. True, we are creative in terms of programs. We make sure that uh, our programs are so much impactive through uh -huh. the response we normally get, uh, the audience uh -huh. response that really gives us. Uh, that hope, that really gives us uh, an assurance that whatever kind of programs we are doing, they are really impacting uh, uh, the, the community. So I believe uh, um, through the creativity of programs we've been doing is uh, why we go to where we are, okay. why we go the award, and also it's, for personal I would say I'll give it to the audience, I'll, I'll give the, the, the credit to the audience because they believe in us. They, okay. the, the, the actually, what's, what, the, what they're saying or what they're talking to us about is we understand or we really appreciate the creativity you guys are doing as Ref FM and we really want to award you. And that's why I would say we got right. that award. And congratulations. Thank you so much. Good luck as well. Uh, as, we, as, as we move away from, from that, uh, maybe uh, how do you guys plug in to support um, refugees living with uh, disabilities? Because uh, it's, it's now like a, a main issue. 
especially also in terms of inclusion, uh, since also this year's theme is all about inclusion. Yes. How do you guys uh, help uh, refugees with disabilities, those who can't hear, who can't see, who can't even completely walk, like they need help from one place to another? Uh, first of all, uh, allow me to um, put it clear that uh, RFFMKK is under Film Aid Kenya. All right. uh, Film Aid mm -hmm. Kenya is, uh, does uh, mm, production of films. Okay. It's a communication through visual, I will say. Okay. Uh, on the other side, RFFM is a communication through audio. So mm -hmm. inclusion of refugees uh, living with disability. With, uh, disability uh, what we do, we are so open to um, when we are doing when we are doing a recruitment. We are so open to giving chances to people living with the or people living with disabilities. And uh, what I will say, how we do this is, um, or how we do the inclusion is by reaching out to such kind of groups, ensuring that uh, at Ref FM the kind of programs we are doing, yeah. they are being uh, received by them as well. What do I mean when I say this? I mean when uh, we are doing a community kind of uh, outreach. Outreach. Hmm. We make sure that we have this special group mm -hmm. of uh, our team that mm -hmm. reach, uh, uh, reach out to such kind of uh, 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 people, just okay. to make sure that we make them feel that whatever we are doing, we are doing them. We are doing uh, them also putting them in our heart, ensuring that. They're also beneficiaries of our program. They're also part of our team. They're also part of the uh, whole community. All right. Yes. All right. I have two questions for you, and then we exit. Uh, in, in regards to today, maybe what are some of the expectations that you guys uh, have tabled that you feel like today we must achieve this in regards to marking World Refugee Day? Uh, the expectations as uh, RFFM, I think uh, one thing I will say, um, as a station, in, um, as we mark this World Refugee Day, just making sure that uh, we uh, include all the refugees in what we do. We make them feel included in everything that we do. Uh, our expectations are, as a radio station uh, will be, and I will say this as an appeal probably maybe, to okay. the, all the organizations who are listening to this conversation. Uh, you know, running a radio station in such environment is easy. We right. need uh, a lot of support, for instance. Mm -hmm. We need uh, kind of some uh, financial, financial support. support. That is uh, yes, uh, in terms of uh, radio equipment, we need uh, that support. So uh -huh. my appeal will just be to uh, the organizations and the government, if probably they will come in just to give us a backup on how um, on, on ensuring that we get this support to make sure that we do our best in good quality and in right. and, 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 and in kind of comfortability, just to make sure that we are delivering the best to the refugee. Refugees right. in the camp, yes. All right. Uh, before you tell us uh, how people can plug in and support as we exit, uh, uh, just on a lighter note, uh, radio, actually the aim of you being a radio presenter is to make people feel good yes. when they listen to radio. Like yeah. how you talk, you must be pleasant yeah. to the person. Like you said, you're speaking to only one person. Yeah. And sometimes that person, you're seeing them in studio with you. All right. So how, how do you guys, you know, make people feel good, especially now that it's a divergent uh, um, uh, uh, crowd of people? How do you guys make them feel good and warm? Uh, I will respond to that by going back to our programs we do. Uh -huh. we, we, we make sure that um, the programs we do, are, our, our, production, our, prog our production of programs are, are such inclusive in a way that, uh, as Alia had told you, we first do research on what people like. Mm -hmm. uh, so probably we know who, we do that by the kind of presenters we have, we know who to put in what show. For example, in the morning, probably okay. uh, definitely we'll, we'll have a presenter who's, uh, who has uh, a good ground touch. Because okay. uh, these are refugee camp. After the show, you can always walk around and interact right. with the refugees. So uh -huh. we do that by actually ensuring that we are placing uh, uh, different presenters at the right shows. Right. Yeah. Presenters right. who have... Uh, uh, that ground touch. You understand what I mean by yeah, ground sure, touch? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So this really makes the refugees feel part of the station. They right. make them feel part of the uh, uh, RFFM. Yeah. yeah. And they develop that relationship with the yeah. presenter. Yeah, I don't know if you've, uh, since you, you've also been in the space, is there maybe something that changes in you? Because radio changes, changes your mind, changes your projection, changes your diction. By the time you transition to TV, you are actually struggle, Kidogo. Like for you personally, did you change? Is there something that changed? There's even also a book about uh, hosting, especially at breakfast. Breakfast are called power shows. Yes. Is there something that changed? Is there something you learned since radio is a theater? 
I think I think what, at at this point, what really changed or what I really struggled with for a few uh, a few weeks uh, at my current uh, position is actually shifted from a full gospel uh, station uh -huh. to kind of vernacular. Uh -huh. So that shift, transition that uh -huh. transition really uh, gave me some kind of uh, uh, I would say headache, kidoga. Okay. Because uh -huh. uh, these, are the, 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 you are you, you are coming from a, a fully gospel station to Vanilla, so the kind of music you listen to this side, you are like, oh, right. So you have to really, uh, you have to really um, uh, cope up with it and move on. Secondly, yeah. um, it was uh, from a radio presenter to to, to, to a station manager, right. so you you kind of have a um, some lot of workload to 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 to, to, to carry on the back, mm -hmm. but uh, with time. I'm cool and we're moving on. We've um, adapted well, right? and uh, that's why we were able to get that Kuza word. All right. Yeah. Uh, you can tell people how they can support uh, uh, REF. I don't that's know. Ref, that's REF. 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 Yes. Yeah. Here in Isama Tui. Isama Tui REF. Those in Isama Jina Ingina. How can people support REF? And if uh, maybe it's there's ref people. REF FM. Yes. If uh, people <laughs> want to reach out and plug in, uh, please tell them where they can find you in that camera. Uh, you, uh, if uh, I will, first of all, urge uh, all the organizations who are watching this and uh, probably the government as well, uh, CAK and also Media, of, uh, Media Council of Kenya. Uh, if you, you you want to find us, you you check on our website. That's Ref FM KK. Um, we 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 are open to all kind of uh, uh, support. So if you check our website, Ref FM KK, ka, that's uh, Ref FM Kakuma or Ref FM Kalobe Kakuma, you'll find uh, all the details on our website. All right. Yes. Okay. By the way, is the event taking place today? Since it's uh, happening in Nairobi. Uh, the, 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 the event uh, just to us uh, to get the the, the, the invite. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm waiting for that. Oh, you're waiting uh, for yeah, it. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, brother, for your time and for coming through. Thank you so much. Is it okay to say Happy World Refugee Day? Because yeah, it, it, it is. It is. It is. It is today because it is uh -huh. the World Refugee Day. So it's it's okay for you to to uh, say happy because i'm specifically targeting the word happy because you know refugees most of them are not happy <laughs> yeah, yeah it has to be happy because you have to make them feel happy and feel accepted feel at home yes all right yeah. okay cool now i have the the part to say happy world refugee day <laughs> thank you all right we have been speaking to george Olanda, who is a radio broadcast journalist and producer at ref f m, m. Right. Thank you so much for coming through and sharing your insights with us. Thank you for hosting me. You're welcome. And on that note, we're going to take a very short break. And up next is Stephanie Yeta. She's coming up with an interesting segment about how do you actually unpack <laughs> from trauma. You know, trauma is really, is really bad. Yeah. But how do you heal from it? Uh, there's, there's a funny hard conversation with that. Uh, he was telling me at some point you need to reparent yourself. You could have gone through wrong parenting. But also that's a good question. Are there people that have gone through wrong parenting and it created like some sort of childhood trauma? How do you reparent yourself now that you're an adult but still struggling with things that happened to you at 9, 10, 12 teenagers? So I can't wait for that conversation coming up shortly on that hashtag, which is hashtag why in the morning, as well as why to Fafo channel on the ground. Facebook and Twitter as well. Personally, at Brian Soko 101. We take a break. We come back with much more. Stick around and don't touch that dial.